Boom. What is good? Two fresh pops to start off a fresh football season. The NFL is back. We are back. Going to give you a little warm-up for us and a warm-up for y'all. Getting ready to uh, recap the, the full NFL slate. But right now, we got one game to recap. We got Bills versus Rams. Pretty excited to be here. Not what I meant to do. I flatulated upon starting, so if Jason makes a face, uh. <laughs> you know where we're at. So, uh, we will be live streaming uh, this Sunday, 9.30 to 10.30-ish. We're going to be live streaming after every week, either Sunday or Monday, depending on our schedules and depending on the game. going to fluctuate, and then we'll be hitting you with uh, an extra show during the week as well. Uh, so every week? Every week. We'll I mean, maybe see. that weird Thanksgiving time gets a little weird and people yeah. travel and get sick. So we shall see. But so make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all those things. Make sure you don't miss anything. If you're uh, on the podcast, five star reviews, still doing the T-shirts, going to give one of those away here real soon. Appreciate all the love we've been getting there. Uh, but let's get into uh, Bills versus Rams. So don't let the liberal media tell you how to think and feel. That's what I was thinking that's what we got. That's what we're here to do today, right? Yeah. So, thirty-one ten. Bills looked sharp and ready to roll, and the Rams, you know, just kind of looked like they were pretty rusty. Better sell all your Rams. Got to sell them all. Sell them. Um, you know, we've seen Stafford be up a little up and down. The Rams went to the Super Bowl last year. That offensive line looks like it might be, you know, a little troublesome, which was something I was a little concerned about. Our resident Rams fan is not here tonight. He he tried to assure me that it wasn't an issue. It could be an they issue. They just took several hits, too, I think. They lost right. a couple guys but in that game. it's also, you know, that was a very, very strong performance by the Bills. It was clear early that the Bills were the, the superior team in a well-oiled machine. Rams take the approach of not really playing a ton of starters in the preseason. It looked that way, mm -hmm. um, as well as Stafford, you know, Hasn't having the injuries all off season. Hasn't right. even thrown a ball pretty much. Not doing a whole lot. Um, so, you know, it definitely looked looked that way. Uh, the the Bills were getting home seven sacks with Stafford last night with with zero blitzes, basically just getting home with four. Um, so, you know, anytime that that's going on, that's going to lead to elite production on the defensive end. And if they can keep that up all season, they rotate a lot of guys through that defensive line. They can keep that up all season. That's a big recipe for success uh, to not have to forego any, uh, you know, bodies without blitzing. Uh, so always a strong uh, look if you can get it done that way. And, and you know, the Ram I think probably two things at work here is again the Rams offensive line not being super great and dialed in as well as the Bills defensive line uh, being super sharp fired up and, and a lot of talent yeah uh, throughout that thing Stafford faced pressure according to PFF uh, on, under 19 different dropbacks seven right. sacks just they were getting after him and they probably should have figured out a way to keep Von Miller on their team yeah if not for just week one alone it looked like right Right. So, I mean, that was that was a, a, a good I mean, Josh Allen looked like he could do whatever he want. I think he was nine for nine to start the game. Um, he was 10 for 10. And then on the 11th one, McKenzie just straight dropped. It right. And uh, was so a pick, which is still a completion. But. Looking like the, you know, far just making strides year after year. Uh, and, and the accuracy is seems to be no longer an issue. Um, he's certainly not too many guys walking the planet doing what Josh Allen can do right now. And I mean, bills were the, the Super Bowl favorite coming into this thing by a lot of the pundits and they, they looked as advertised. Um, and now obviously we're going to, you know, bills lost to Pittsburgh, I think last year, opening week uh, Rams had some, some up and downs uh, throughout. So, you know, take it for what it is. It's week one. Let's get, let's get some games under our belt before we jump to any big conclusions we don't want to get the mat out just yet to be jumping to conclusions well um, one thing that was brought up we we, we went uh, live on the discord channel last night just had a little hangout with the patrons and uh someone was bringing up the fact that you know josh allen looked like he was pretty accurate out there with the ball and then i was like not only is he accurate but he's just picking apart the defense from anywhere and like doing whatever he, he wants he spread it around right you know he's not like just going after one or two guys which several guys feasted and you know i kind of wish they could take crowder and 
McKenzie and make him one fucking guy because then that would have been a, a decent little night. Fantasy but, wise, you're right. This is not what you were hoping for for those guys. Right. You're just waiting for Crowder to get hurt, basically, to plug or McKenzie. McKenzie in. Uh, well, it's more likely that Crowder. Yeah. I don't know if he's ever made it through a full season, but Josh Allen looked like he could do, like you said, anything he wanted to do. And he was taking what the defense was giving him for a while. It, it took into the third quarter before he hit that deep bomb to, to Diggs. There weren't that. That many right. even deep attempts. He it looks like he just actually Stafford had two more deep pass attempts than Matt than and, and prodding Allen did. The defense taking what they were giving, like you said. But let's go to the Rams side first. Stafford, we kind of talked about it under pressure. I think all of these things kind of were a factor in kind of what we saw last night. Is the elbow a concern? Where, where were the shots you just mentioned? They took more than than Allen did, but we know that that's not a problem with Allen. We know that it. You know, could be seemed like a lot of things were kind of in that short to intermediate range for Stafford. Not saying that the elbow is actually a concern. I think it was basically that there. Was, I would wonder what the amount of time he had to throw was. I haven't been able to find that stat just yet. Um, but it wasn't a lot, and he was being pressured heavy with you know, like you said, or like you know, two point five two seconds, which is actually a little bit more than Josh Allen for when, time to, to to average time to throw. When you're able to. Uh, sit there drop back and, and do your thing um it's, it's a lot different than than when you're really getting crushed and i feel like it just every time you looked up that there was somebody in the face of matthew stafford um and you know and, and at that point you know one he hasn't really thrown the ball to Allen robinson a whole lot because as we alluded to he hasn't practiced a whole lot and two in that situation where everything's moving twice as fast because you're getting a little gun shy from all the pressure that you're getting um, you know, you, you already go, you go right back to that safety blanket of who is Cooper cup, who was basically that entire offense last night, who, you know, what the, obviously was great through last season. We thought it might shift a little bit off of that. And I think we still might see that moving forward. Cause I think we're going to go back and watch this film and be like, look, man, you gotta get, you gotta be looking to Allen Robinson over here. There's no reason to not be doing this, but, but when it's live bullets, all of a sudden you haven't played a whole lot. Uh, all of a sudden you're just going back to what exactly what you know and what you know is is Cooper Cup uh, and you know I'm not saying that uh, that Cooper Cup won't be the same th this good every week he, he certainly could be um, but I think you, you can't, you're not going to win by targeting not by targeting Allen Robinson twice and him playing 65 snaps out of 67 or whatever and you know targeting Cooper Cup a million times like at some point you could just put the whole defense over there and then you got to do something else. I'm not really sure why the, I guess the, what that didn't matter for the bills. So they didn't really need to necessarily stop Cooper cup. Um, and I think that could be the, the case in a lot of situations moving forward. Like if this is all you got might just let you do it. And then, you know, good luck. Right. Cause they, you know, you're also not going to win the ball throwing it 50 times, most likely, which Stafford had 50 attempts. Right. And you were behind a lot of that game. For and sure. And couldn't it shouldn't have been, have been even tied. Better. It shouldn't have been right. tied going into half. The fact they kept it so close for so long was, was mostly luck because that was just poor, bad luck that Allen threw that pick. And, and then uh, I believe there was a fumble as well. But, right. But uh, back to Allen Robinson, like – a lot of people mad at Allen Robinson for good reason. You know, he 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 messed you up in your starting lineup. It's fine, right? Brand new team. They're figuring it out. Rusty off season for for that team. Like Stafford not practicing at all, not even making throws, having some injections and random things with his shoulder. You asked if it was a concern. I think it is a little bit of a concern, but I don't think it's anything to overreact to just yet. Like if they come out and win the game and, and he does, he just kind of keeps it all underneath and it, they don't get crushed. It's not a concern, but now that, that you lost in the fashion that you lost in now, it's definitely a concern. It, it, it probably always was a little bit of a concern, but you tried not to let it bog you down. I, I, Go ahead. But back to Allen Robinson. Yeah. Like pe people mad at him. Be you know, if you read the Roto World blurb, it's like he couldn't separate. And it's like, ah. we went to Next Gen Stats because they kind of keep all that stuff and give you some of it. But he didn't have three targets, so they didn't list the separation of yards that he had on his routes. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to see exactly what's going on when you can't watch, when you're not watching the All-22s. I haven't gone back and looked at the all 22s from that game. I was trying to pay attention to him and, and seeing it look like, you know, because once they get out the screen, you can't really see them. And there were definitely times 
when he was open. But several of those times, Stafford's rolling the other right. way and then and pressure. And he just, I don't know. I don't think it's a separation problem with Allen Robinson. So I'm not ready to just no, I don't panic know. button with Allen Robinson yet. And they could definitely grease that wheel next week. I, I'm going to say that you're going to get into that meeting room. McVay is, is uh, after the game, basically took it all on himself, uh, which, you know, no surprise there. And, you know, you're going to adjust. You got to say, hey, we can't just be so laser focused over here. We got to be able to run this offense and spread this around. We picked up Allen Robinson. We saw how good the offense operated when Odell was healthy. um, And you had a a really good second option or Robert Woods and Odell, uh, you know, which they suffered some injuries throughout last year. And you think you bring in Allen Robinson, you paid him a lot of money. I mean, I, I think week two, you know, unless you have a equal to option to Allen Robinson. I'm not all that scared to trot him out there for week two. You're going to start him again week two. You know, I, I have teams where, you know, I, I do have other options. Like I could, you know, I could potentially start Mooney over Allen Robinson. And yeah. I, what about Amari Cooper? We'll have to see, I got to see what that looks like. He's at least the number one option over there. Right. Or maybe not. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I mean, he could he could get banged up on play too, but I I feel like he's going to get more than two targets, you know. Yeah, and I, and I don't think I don't think there might not be another time you see Allen Robinson with two targets this entire season. Um, it was just the fact that you just there wasn't one time where you just rolled over, ran him down the field, and just threw it up to him. I think right. those were two you don't rookie even need corners. The separation, right? And I mean, you're talking about him. separation. You get to the next gen stats, like everybody else was floating around four yards of separation. Stephon Diggs crushed it last night and had two point four yards for separation. So, right. I mean, let's not get too too carried away with that. Um, uh, there were several times where looking at the replay, you could see Allen Robinson was open. It wasn't like there's no way he could ever separate from somebody. And I mean, at the end, of, is maybe, by midway through the game, Allen Robinson's probably feeling like, damn, I'm in the same. I came over here to be winning and now and get the ball thrown my way. And I'm in the same situation. Now I'm losing I was, and not getting the ball. I was before. So, I mean, I was listening to. TJ Hushman's out to talk about it. And he was like, you know, he's, he's not that kind of guy. He's not an outspoken guy, but like he was probably pretty pissed, you know, by halfway through that game with, with the, the chances that he was getting, which was virtually none. Um, you know, so I'm not necessarily worried about Allen Robinson. I, first of all, it's week one. There shouldn't be that many guys that you're worried about moving forward. We've seen plenty of times where studs lay duds week one. It just plenty. There's going to be more studs that, that lay eggs, week one maybe not quite as bad as two targets uh but this game like i said got out of hand hurry i think it's a good observation is that there was some times where he was open and the play just broke down he was stafford was moving around and he, he couldn't get to him but a lot of the times those eyes went right to where cooper cup spot of the field was because that's what he knows that's what the security blanket was so i think you could have possibly seen maybe a little exaggeration of cup usage because of just the the situation of pressure and not being on the field a whole lot in the off season for Stafford. So right, um, maybe a Rob doesn't like breakfast. You know, maybe yeah, maybe, maybe he's he a needs breakfast to skipper. figure out how to get that fucking breakfast in. Yeah, he's not bro. a breakfast guy. Join yeah. the table. Just go sit down at the cool kids table. And be yeah. like, what are you guys talking about? Plop that thing. You guys down. talking about me? No. How about you do? <laughs> Let me get some. Yeah. Uh, Matt's not here, but week one Higby was almost a thing. He almost got over. I think it was 40 yards was the was the prop. I think he was 39. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Five for 11. So uh, not targets. quite there, uh, but not the worst out of a tight end, really. I mean, could, be, could be worse. You can't fuck with Higby, man. He can't no. even catch week one Higby, wide he open was balls. More, say, more so going with him because they were a little depleted. There was the opportunity. opportunity. Was right there. He had there. 11 he fucking a, targets. Played a lot of snaps, but he's also played a lot of snaps most of his career. So I'm not, I'm not, I've been out on Higby, but that was his, his guy. Didn't work out for him. Uh, but really, the next big storyline in the Ram side of things was the Henderson uh, Acres guy. We're Team Hendo over here. Been for a while. He's so much cheaper. Um, he's you know and liked him. You know, we liked him last year. It's cheap money, man. You could get him in the tenth round until Acres got hurt. Then he soared up to like the fourth round. That was a little aggressive. And then this then year he got hurt, and he was he was okay there for a little while. He was startable for looked sure. Looked pretty decent last night. They they obviously got down thirteen for forty seven. Uh, thirteen attempts, forty seven. Uh, rushing yards five for five in the passing game uh played obviously a butt ton more snaps than than acres did what would you have those i actually don't have that number in front Let's of me see. so cam Akers played fucking 
How, how did he play two snaps and had three attempts? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, Henderson had 14 snaps on 13 attempts. So so that's what, whether it's Henderson, two or three. Henderson totaled 55 snaps uh, yesterday. He must be just rushing snaps. Yeah. He had 55 snaps to Akers 12. Um so and you didn't see him Acres for a minute. Like the, no. I don't think the first two drives did you see Acres. And you know, Henderson didn't look bad at all, and he looked he made a couple good grabs uh, in the receiving game. Uh, and and I think even if Acres was really hitting on all cylinders, they'll probably do a little bit of the hot hand. Uh, but you're probably going to see a split even if Acres was necessarily healthy. The dead zone running back in Acres is was was muerto uh, or dead uh, here. Uh, you know, was it wasn't good, but he was also, you know, both of those guys were kind of injured coming in into the game. Uh, Akers did say he was feeling really good, but prior to the game or whatever, leading up to the game. Uh, but, you know, he's coming off an Achilles and just maybe they just didn't want to. I, I don't really he's coming know off another injury, too. Right. Like he had a soft tissue. Right, that's what I'm saying. He was injured kind of leading up to the game. Both him and Henderson kind of were, were touch and go there for a little while. Um, and Henderson, you know, looked fine last night. Didn't seem to re-aggravate anything. And Acres, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, you could say what the hell's going on with Acres. Some of those touches were just unfortunate. And you could, when you look at the box score or whatever, you watch those, and they won a whole lot. But like two of those touches, he was just met in the backfield as soon as he was getting the ball put in his hand or put in his belly. Um, and it, so, you know, he had three attempts for zero yards. Um, not all acres fault and, and again maybe leading up to that being a little injured and um yeah you know, coming off a big injury just a lot of combinations of things should you be so so worried about acres no you probably shouldn't start him next week Can't i start I, him. I didn't tell anybody just that asked me about an acres versus i pretty much went with the other guy every time um not to pat my I'll be wrong a million times on sit starts um but you know, I, I, I didn't want to, any part of Acres coming into week one here. I mean, in week two, certainly any option seems almost better than, than Acres going into week two. But I'm not in like, you don't need to be buying and selling everybody after week one. It's going to be all right. Let's just pump the brakes here. Let's relax, take a couple breaths uh, and see how the next couple of weeks pan out. Um, I don't think Acres is necessarily cooked. He wasn't a guy that I was super interested in. But, um, you know, I... Let's just let's take the wait and see approach. Um, How do you say this guy's last name? I have no idea. Ian Hart. He he. Ian Hartitz. Hartitz. Hart Hartitz. Maybe. He is always crushing the tweets, man. I feel like he comes with some pretty good shit, and I think he said something about like. Uh, the entire career of Cam Akers comes down to how he does on his first touch tonight. <laughs> like he tweeted that before the game, you know, like that's it's not fucking, inaccurate. That's for so how twi- this, that's Twitter, right? And that's Twitter. Show. And that's, uh, that's some, that's some nice satire right there. That's fantastic. Like he's all, I well think done. he's the one that put that person falling from the second floor. This is what every Mike Williams, uh, catch looks like. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> she like broke both. Well done. Legs or something. <laughs> Uh, decent follow there. He's, he's crushing <laughs> it. But it was like you know, everyone's gonna overreact to the first. The the and what's crazy? The, the basically only had one touch. <laughs> like it two or three carries. Three maybe? for zero yards. That's yeah. Funny. So basically, he's a bust. He's done. And you you're an idiot if you liked him. And if you have him, you should sell him for whatever you could get for him. One dollar fab budget. If you can get one dollar of fab for cam makers, do it. Like it's wild. Like it was just logging onto Twitter and scrolling through. It was just like Jesus. Christ, this is what y'all boys do? listen. You can't get this mad over one game. Like it just, you just can't. If you if you do, I hope to God you don't gamble on yeah. actual spreads because you you have nothing left in your house. It would all be broken. Um, but or sold to the pawn shop. You know, I I just it's just let's just wait a second. Let's see how the Rams bounce back here. And and I mean, right now you go in week one. Rams miss playoffs. Fact or fiction? <laughs> I mean, if you're going more likely to make or miss, I mean, yeah. But let's see what happens with the Falcons because everyone's expecting them to just roll these Falcons next week, and I don't. Falcons could be like sneaky, okay, and 
Anybody in the in the NFL? Every what happens if they put up a, a fight? You know, the the narrative towards the Rams is going to shift even fucking worse. The thing I trust most is McVay to adjust. Yeah. To 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 get this this ship righted and and you know and that was basically their preseason bad bad first game to right. have for your preseason. Uh, but you know, like bad I'm matchup. Not in full panic mode with anybody on the Rams necessarily. And I got to do a shout out to Scott Van Pelt because I hit, I watched a little bit of his show after the, which is fantastic. So Scott good. Van Pelt, Sports Center, best thing on ESPN. He basically tells your hot takes to go f themselves because just a regular dude having media, just regular observation takes and just not trying to. Just like those are the kind of guys that I really like in the sports world. And it's just a sad, sad state of things that we live in that everything has to be so blah, aggressively blah, blah, stated blah, 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 for. Blah. Clicks and it's like I used to be mad at those guys. I used to be mad at Skip Bayless and Stephen A. But I'm, I'm mad more mad at, at the, the fucking public that I'm you're so dumb that you keep coming back for this horse shit, mm -hmm. manufactured garbage. Guys like Scott Van Pelt have never left their their uh, seat. They just stayed right where they are. Always good, well spoken, funny, entertaining, and has a good knowledge for what's going on. So he shout said, out to those kind of dudes. He said you can't be hungry. If you're full, like the Rams are full, right? They just won the Super Bowl. They they're fat. They've been getting touted all off season. Everybody that comes up to them is like, "Guy, you guys are the best. You just won the Super Bowl." You know. And then Odell's in the fucking building, yeah. and they drop the banner, and we're the fucking best. Just basically Guess who's hungry? getting ready to be served up as pate. Right. The fucking Bills are hungry. They don't have a Super... You know, they didn't just win the Super Bowl. They boys, were supposed to. They're them boys geeked up, ready to fucking Lost their go. chance on a coin flip, essentially, last right. year. Whoever touched that ball in that game was probably going to the next round, and they lost. In overtime. Was it overtime? Or was yeah. Was it the 13-second? No, that, that was overtime, problem. I believe. Yeah, they went to... They, well, they scored, and then the Chiefs came down to take it to overtime, coin uh, flip. Oh, with the 13 seconds. They got it to overtime, yeah. and then they lost the coin flip, and... Never got the ball back. Right. But the, so them boys were hungry. You yeah. Know? They've been thinking about that shit for a minute. For all off season, yeah. Ready to go and just fucking whoop that ass. And, you and know, it should have been no even Andrew worse than it was. over there They could have been up 21 to nothing like yeah. that. But yeah. they, they kind of fucked it up. Yeah. But you're right. That's a good that's a good quote to pull there. So let's go to the other side. The Bills. Hmm. Um, you know. Probably Josh Allen Hall of Famer. Josh Allen looking like. They call him the Mandalorian. Do they? <laughs> Why is that? Just because he's a fucking freak. He's just yeah. not not of this earth. Um, can I do mean, whatever he wants. Just a bounty hunter. Just sick. Um, you know. But more of the same. I, I was very curious to see how the rushing attack would go for the straight Singletary, baby. And it, well, and it, but it was more of the same. Fucking uh, Josh Allen leading this team in fucking rushing yards. Mm. Um, you know, and what was kind of cool, well, cool, or interesting is that the first half, it seemed like they didn't even want to run them. They just wanted to show you that we could just do whatever the fuck we wanted for those for that. And then the second half, all of a sudden, boom, boom. We were even talking about it in the discord chat. Like, I don't think Josh Allen's run at all. And then he came out, ran it, ran it, ran it. And then, well, they you know, needed to actually like put the game away and take a right. lead. And it now was he took some, moment, some, took some dumb know. hits that you don't want to see him take. But I mean. That's part of his game. I mean, and a know. lot of it was like third down right. conversions or, you know, he scored the touchdown and. But the, the interesting. Stiff arm that motherfucker. He did. That thing <laughs> it was, was ridiculous. Fucking dirty. Um, and it was like he didn't. He ended up making the tackle, but he got the first down with the stiff right. arm. And obviously James Cook fumbles on his one, you know, his like first bust. attempt. But that breakdown for the running backs goes 34 snaps for Singletary, 22 snaps for Moss. And three snaps for Cook, um, and which is interesting because Moss was being traded, left for dead. Two, two seasons ago, he was taking Singletary's job, and he was the best thing ever. And now it seems like uh, Cook came in, fucked up on his first rep, basically. And then Moss came in and had, you know, a decent game. Six, six for six on receptions, 21 yards, six uh, carries for 15 yards. Singletary kind of leading the way there. Didn't certainly Singletary never really looks bad if he gets the reps, um, which has always been, you know, I like Singletary just fine. But it's just like this is this was my reservation with anybody in this backfield week to week. How are we going to use him? And it's just like nobody's very much fun right now to own in this. And this was my hesitation with drafting James Cook uh, uh, being a first round rookie pick. Now, I did end up picking him up in some startups because the cost 
I liked where that cost was. Where, where sometimes it would fall into the ninth, tenth round, and now Which I'm in, in a first round rookie pick. Now generally. I'm interested at, because of what could be, but now I don't feel nearly as invested. I can I can kind of pick him and and have him as third running back on my team or whatever, or hopefully he could be my RB two. Uh, but last night you didn't. I don't think you got to quite see what you wanted. It was you know week one. You can't have the rookie out there fucking up. We'll see what happens week two and how the snaps break down. Uh, but, you know, this could lead to a couple more weeks of it, it being more of a slow build for Cook, which this, again, was kind of my worry leading up to any of the Bills. You know, I, like I said, I think Singletary always looks good. I never thought Moss was terrible. I think James Cook is good. But are you going to design? Basically, my thing w- with him was, are you going to design enough plays in this offense to make him be worthy of a first round rookie pick to be startable in your lineup. And I felt like it was probably going to be spotty and right in week one, we didn't see it, but again, you can't panic. You can't get upset about it. You got to just take it for what it is. Would have gotten more snaps. Had he not fumbled. I would assume that there was probably a couple more ticks next to his name in the game plan, but that was probably just to keep you honest and say, Hey, we will hand it to this guy to run it. But what they want to do is get him in space and be another receiving weapon for Josh Allen at a, at a a crucial time, because he is an electric guy who can take it to the house. So for sure. There's never, it's not, wasn't anything about uh, talent. But you have to show that you can hold on to the ball. You have to and show that you need to be and pass protect and, and you, all that shit. And the Bills need to show a willingness to to game plan you into usage for me to play you. They might be good for them, but not for your fantasy team. I, I've not wanted to. Pl- I mean, I have Cook in one spot, and if and you it's a redraft league, and I already dropped him for Algier, right? Because if, if Algier does something good, I can't get him next week, and if he doesn't, then I can drop and pick James Cook back up, right? Like, if you know you went is four targets for Crowder, nine targets for Diggs, six targets for Moss, two targets for Singletary, five targets for Gabe Davis, three targets for McKenzie, two targets for Dawson Knox. So, you know, if you replace Moss with Cook and he can get if if, if Cook could get six Probably targets getting a game, more than twenty one yards on six catches. Maybe, maybe not, but either way, I'll take that I'll take the six opportunities with Cook and maybe, you know, you were hoping that the cook usage would be a little bit more along the moss usage. So if you could replace that, they do, you know, they would seem like they can spread it around a little bit here. Like you were kind of saying in the, when we first started talking about the bills here, but you know, again, there's no reason to freak out just stating kind of what happens and my feelings on it and my feelings leading into it. It wasn't any anti uh, James cook isms, uh, but you know, it certainly was hesitation to see how that was going to be used. And, and, you know, if Zach Moss could be any indicate, but why why take Zach Moss out of the fold if he's if he's playing you know fairly well for you? So we'll kind of see how that plays out. Week two could be a completely different breakdown of of snap percentages and all that if if Cook comes out and and doesn't have the big mistake to start things off because you you know you don't need to show confidence in that rookie because you do have other options. You're kind of you they almost scolded him a little bit uh, by you know. Some teams don't have that luxury to be like, hey, we're hey, we got to get you back out there, bud. Like, you know, maybe you do it again. We might take you off the field. But the Bills have the luxury to not do that. Like, we don't even want to fucking run the ball. So get out of <laughs> right. We, you know, we drafted you to catch these six passes that we're going to throw down. Right. Uh, but, you know, Stefan Diggs steps right back in. We, t- we talked a lot about uh, where he falls in the hierarchy of guys. And it's like, I mean, he to me, he was going to get the Devontae Adams treatment. And that's exactly what happened last night. Um, and he should be up there with with those those veterans and Devontae Adams in, in tears if you're ranking them. Um, but what was yeah, interesting... Yeah, I definitely wasn't high enough on Diggs coming into the season. What was interesting is that he played um, 37 out of 57 snaps where Gabe Davis you know, played 100, Knox played 50. Uh, 100%. Or, or 100% of the snaps, basically, 57. Um, and Knox played 50. So Diggs out there doing what he's doing almost you know seemingly probably in more passing situations than necessarily running situations i I probably could sort that out a little better and see what the run run block doesn't really matter just it was interesting that Diggs wasn't out on the field quite as much as i would have thought uh and maybe that's preservation on his look what he did with the little bit of time that he was on the field and you know like i said that separation number wasn't nearly as high it was like 2.4 for Diggs, but Still just absolutely, you know, nine nine targets, eight receptions, 122 yards, and a touch. So 
PFF I mean, has Diggs having played 30 passing snaps and Gabe Davis 38 passing snaps. Right. So on the passing downs, obviously out there, you know, a good bit. And makes uh, a good, big catch. He gets to come off the field and rest a little bit. They bring the other guys right. in. So maybe a little preservation on um, on Diggs' part. But, I mean, it, I think that's going to be pretty much every week you're just going to – it's Diggs. You just saw it with out there with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae, the same kind of chemistry, trust – all you need is a look over there. I'll throw it over to, to Diggs. He'll get what he needs. Uh, and we can move forward. But we had another guy on the uh, on the bills here who a lot of offseason. Will he? Won't he? Is he worth this? Is he worth that? Right. When I hear a sound, I rap at the door. My young son Gabriel walks in. My wife says, no, Gabriel, leave. I say, no, let the boy watch. Gabe, Gabe was allowed to watch. Let the boy watch. <laughs> Not only did he watch, he participated. He needs to learn the way I learned from my father. The way he learned from his father. <laughs> <laughs> you need to check that Fantastic whole video out clip. if you haven't seen it. Eastbound and down, plums, outtakes. Uh, but, but Gabe... I can feel it down in my plums Gabe comes in and and you know that that first touchdown was was just good play a good play design perfect um and, so and well and I done thought he overthrew him but he put just enough touch on it and Gabe's pretty fast and it was just like right there boom Gabe had the five the uh, fastest clock MPH is out there last night 20. oh yeah you got uh, it yeah. from your uh, next gen <laughs> next gen stats what was the probability of the Rams coming back and winning that game not high enough yeah. zero I yeah. think <laughs> not low enough I guess right <laughs> Um, but, you know, like I said, he played every snap, five targets, four grabs, 88 yards and a touchdown. Uh, the fact that he was just on the field that much is is nice to see. Um, gives you a little bit of confidence. Like I said, the first touchdown was like, hey, that's good play scheme. But you can't take it fucking away from him. Like the Bills are just going to be able to do those kind of things. Good scheme ridiculous offense you got to respect every inch of the field on him so if you're going to use Gabe Davis in that that's what I want you to be using Gabe Davis in that scenario um so they did and it worked and then you, he caught he caught the bomb um and you I know, don't think that the market share was that great though only five targets you know whatever people are still trying to be like I said I told you he still wasn't any good he, he just, played every snap I don't give a shit doesn't yeah. matter to me like he's on so the did field. Alan Robinson that's all I needed that's all I needed to be and it, yeah it's true <laughs> <laughs> um, I just need Gabe to be out there and be dependable, um, and which you got it last night. I'm not saying every week will be what you just got from Gabe Davis. I'm not. You shouldn't sell or buy. Just fucking sit out week one, and if anybody gets wonky, you know, then you might be able to capitalize. I mean, but, would you buy a Rob or or Acres? Um, I mean, I've never been a huge Acres guy, so that's hard for me to say. If somebody was like, "Hey, I want to get out from a Rob," I'd take the chance on him. I mean, I'm not going to buy him for a first or anything. Jahan Dotson or or Acres? Um, like a trade straight up? Yeah. Give me Dotson. Fuck it. I'll take a first rounder for. I mean, I guess he's been kind of drafted in the second rounder, but. Yeah, I mean, Acres could come out and by week four make that look like a terrible call. But I mean, I've I, I've also just never never been, been a huge Acres guy. Here. So, yeah. so A Rob uh, down to purchase some A Rob though. I, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not going to go hunting, but if somebody seems like they're eager to unload A Rob after this, because who's really making a trade after week one? You know what I mean? Settle I, down in, in redraft. I guess if you're just you know trying to shuffle the deck around, try to take advantage of things in dynasty. You know, if, if somebody's really really hitting panic buttons, maybe I'll hop in and get a get a, a good deal. Uh, but you know, we're mostly talking dynasty on the show. But and you can't be trading the guy that didn't just do well. You got to sit on it. There's no time to sell a Rob right now or K or Acres. You got to sit. Anyway. If you're not a Gabe Davis believer. And you just so happen to have him for whatever reason, picked him up in Fab or whatever, and you want to get rid of him after Week One, you know it wasn't. Can you get a twenty three first? It was, a, it was a good enough game, probably so from somebody doing that. You probably could have got it before the season. We tried. We did try in one league, first. and and we were really close. We were close, um, and then I think. Big Co also asked for Mooney or something. Right. I don't know exactly what. Well, we got, we, we got, always agree with a trade with Big Co. And then got a little it at the last off minute. kilter. So I think that was available in a lot of leagues. And I think you could certainly fetch that now if you really want to. Are you to. doing that? 
I mean, I'm okay with hanging on. It depends on where my team is and what the build is, which well, is he's always a young you know, dude. Contextually, it, it always matters a lot. Um, but I'm I'm fine with hanging on to to Gabe Davis. You know, gonna give me this kind of usage and tied to Allen for a little while. Sure. He's 23. Yeah, big fast guy. I mean, played a lot. You know, got to keep him. I'm fine with that. Over we'll, that 23 we'll see, first. See what are you can... looking for? That 23 first. Now, now, Gabe Davis. now somebody, you know, will come in and say, you know, if, if you can figure out, I mean, look, take this all sorts of ways. If you could take, if you have another first and some seconds and maybe you, if you could take it, somehow weasel your way into turning Gabe Davis into B. John Robinson, then of course you should probably make that move. But that's, you know, not, none of that is, is, is a guarantee. And I, I think, I think, we're probably haven't even really seen like we get into week six or seven and maybe the Gabe Davis hysteria could really be uh, building to a, a nice crescendo. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, if, if you're not a believer, you could cash out, but I'd wait. And I, I think this is just going to be, you know, might be a little up and down, but I think it's going to be good enough to probably move him from like the 10th round startup, ninth round startup area where maybe you were seeing him in a single double quarterback league to, you know, moving him up to maybe, you know, fifth, fourth, fifth area, you know, in a few weeks. Seems like a lot, but maybe. We'll the see, dynasty. We'll I don't right, know where he was right, going right, right. in redraft, uh, but I know he was. You Probably know, like ninth. He was in the Ayuk uh, area in a lot of the drafts that we were doing. So, you know, eighth. Nine, ten, sometimes yeah. hanging around. Some people were big on Gabe Davis, so we would go early seven. Some sometimes he'd hang around until nine. Yeah. Um, so what? What else you got? That's it. Dawson Knox. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, Dawson Knox played a lot. Not a lot of targets. I've never been was was kind of off of him just because it's it's streaky. Seems like touchdown regression. TD dependent and and usage dependent. I you know the constants digs basically and josh allen um and hopefully that it's going to turn into a little bit more of gabe davis and like you said if you could meld uh crowder and isaiah but i think while they're both healthy they might might cannibalize each other a little bit and it could be different touchdowns uh each week but I, the bills probably have a pretty high total every week uh points wise so not the worst bet uh for fantasy players to score touchdowns so all right. Well, that was quite the recap. Yeah, just a little uh, get get us warmed up for what we're about to do. Going to get a get little stream action going. Going to be talking all sorts of stuff, recapping, having a good time, talking about all the major stuff, and then come back with a show. We're going to have uh, John Bauer on. We're going to get some more J. Mike. We'll get some Angelo. We're going to do some college stuff this year. Um, all sorts of good stuff. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Five star reviews, all that jazz, and uh, stick with us all off season because we'll be taking you right into them rookies. Yeah, send me a send me a screenshot of a five star review. You'll enter you into the contest. I'll be able to pick a winner next show. So last chance to get into that contest. I'll start another one up on uh, Monday, next Thursday, Sunday, whatever. We come on here again, live show. Be looking out for that. We appreciate y'all, boys. We'll see you next time. And girls. You don't want to leave out the girls. We appreciate the girls, too. They, thems. Whoever's watching. All y'all. That's how we say in the South. Peace.